I get to introduce the first family of basketball. For those of you who know the history of the game, this is seriously cool. There's one name that really stands above the rest in the history of our game. I think everybody here knows that name is Naismith. Dr. James Naismith, the founder of basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce the grandchildren of Dr. Naismith himself. With us this evening are Jim Naismith, grandson of Dr. James Naismith, and Helen Naismith Carp Carpenter. Jim and Bev Naismith come to us from Texas while Will and Helen drove over from St. Louis. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Naismith family. I'll be brief. What a great honor it is to join this group here to recognize some people that are just so recognizable. Uh, Bev and I were invited, to, for obvious reasons, I tell people, I said, I do have a good name. Uh, but I've tried to understand as best I can my granddad's uh, uh, dream in life. And uh, he, was, he, he passed away when I was only three years old, so I don't have any direct memory of the gentleman. But I've worked hard to understand what he was doing, why he was doing it. And I'm convinced that if he were here tonight and he had the opportunity that I've had to meet some of the, not all of them, I'm sure, but some of the people that are being recognized, he would, he would say, Jim, these are neat people. <laughs> and that is absolutely true. I've, I've just listened mostly. I, I talk too much, I'm sure, but I, I've tried to listen mostly. And I hear their life stories. I hear their regard for others. I hear their, their situations that they've worked out of. I've, I've heard their, their love for students and, and team. Uh, all of this just by trying to keep my ears open and seeing, and particularly with the focus of the smaller colleges, because I know that he, his focus was, was individual students, teams. It didn't really make much difference where they came from, I don't think. Uh, but uh, just have thoroughly enjoyed becoming more uh, aware of what's going on and want to compliment uh, John and the, and the program that's been developed to recognize these wonderful people. And I just thank you for including me with your group this evening. Thank you. Obviously, we share his, Jim's assessment and, and, and of history. We think it's wonderful that this exists. Of all the things that go on about basketball, I'm sure this would please Dr. Naismith more than anything else going on. Uh, you're all to be commended for that. A little bit of history. Uh, Helen was a little girl. I won't say how old because that will get me in deep trouble. But uh, at any rate, her mother became quite ill. Her father had three boys to take care of and sent Helen to live with Dr. Naismith for the summer. And he had just lost his wife. So he poured all the love you can imagine into Helen. They went for walks. The thing that creates such a great mental picture Helen cried until the house almost washed away because she missed her mother. And Dr. Naismith finally said, look, here's my bedroom. I'm going to pull out this trundle bed and you're going to sleep in the trundle bed and I'm going to hold my hand over the side of the bed and you hold my hand until you go to sleep, which is just what a grandfather would do. And, uh, she remembers that. To our knowledge, uh, Helen might be the only one left with real memories. But when we started over his things, it's, the men aren't going to like this. There were over 400 letters in the boxes that her mother and Helen went through. All, most of them were letters from him to Maud his wife. 
without exception, no matter what the subject matter was, whether he was a chaplain in France, whether he was riding on the railroad tracks, going to uh, New York, whatever, when he wrote a letter to her, a substantial part of that letter was always a love letter to Maud. He made all the rest of us men in here look like bumpkins in not being as loving to their wife as he was. But uh, that's just one part of his life. He is truly a Renaissance man in every sense of the word, ranging from being a lumberjack to a physician, to a chaplain, to a coach. Incidentally, one little another tidbit, he is still the only losing coach that KU has ever had. <laughs> and uh, with that little piece of information, I'd like to thank you all for being so generous to us.